Without further ado, I'd like to introduce our next distinguished speaker, and that would be Mr. Takeshi Uchiyamada. Mr. Uchiyamada is chairman of the board of directors at Toyota Motor Corporation. Toyota has long been a supporter of USJC as well as Tomodachi, and we are honored to welcome Mr. Uchiyamada to our conference, and please welcome him to the stage. Good afternoon. First of all, on behalf of Toyota, I want to extend our deepest sympathies to those affected by the wildfires here in California. We are sending our prayers that the brave men and women fighting these fires will be able to contain them very soon so the rebuilding and the healing process can begin. Thank you for inviting me to join you today. It's a pleasure to be here celebrating the 10th anniversary of the US JC Annual Conference today. Toyota has a long-standing re relationship with the U.S.-Japan Council, including the Tomodachi Initiative. And I want to thank you for all your work fostering the new generation to be a bridge between U.S. and Japan and to continue being committed to strengthening U.S.-Japan relationship. I was very interested in today's theme, Bold Ideas, Bolder Leadership. It would not be an exaggeration to say that innovation and the role leadership can and must play to foster and nurture it has been part of Toyota's history and my life's work. Our company's earliest beginnings can be traced back to the founder, Sakichi Toyoda, and his groundbreaking idea for a power loom that sets the benchmark for the technology of its day. Obviously, we have since become far better known for making cars, but Sakichi's creative spark, his bold idea, became something even bigger, which gave rise to even bolder leadership. And today, I'd like to share my personal insight into how leadership and innovation has played itself out over my career. I'll also talk about some of the projects currently in the works to give you a glimpse of how Toyota is approaching the future of mobility. Looking back, I guess you could say my fate and Toyota's were destined to meet. After all, I grew up in Okazaki, a short drive from the company's headquarters in Toyota City. Then, in the same year, I graduated from Nagoya University with a degree in applied physics. Toyota hired me. That was 1969. The same year, Neil Armstrong became the first man to set foot on the moon. But unlike Neil, my early years with Toyota were not as exciting. <laughs> and more earthbound than his. I tested vehicles for noise, vibration, and harshness. Not exactly glamorous, but I learned, I learned a lot. Eventually, 
I was selected to be the chief engineer for a bold new project. The mission they gave me was Baguio, built a car for the 21st century. Talk about an innovator's dreams. This way, this was my moonshot. But it was also a little scary. I was given the resources needed to succeed, including the authority to put together more than 1,000 people to work on the project. They also gave me a very ambitious deadline. I had to come up with this groundbreaking concept in just 36 months. No pressure, right? I realized no one person could solve this puzzle on their own. So one of the management tactics I employed was obea, which is Japanese for big room. I wanted to create a safe place where engineers could bounce ideas off one another without concern about repercussions. Out of that discussion emerged the core concept for this 21st century vehicle, which we pare down to just a few words, natural resources, energy, and environment. Very early on it was clear to us that this new vehicle had to exist in harmony with nature. That might seem obvious today, but it was rather visionary 25 years ago. In the end, we delivered on our mission with the first gasoline electric hybrid vehicle. You know it today as the Prius. Looking back, Hybrid technology might seem like a no-brainer, but back then, a gallon of gasoline was just one dollar here in the U.S., and the marketplace wasn't asking for a car that was twice as fuel efficient as those on the road at that time. The Furious wasn't uh, an idea that emerged from market research and focus groups. Rather, it was a visionary leap forward to what customers would want before they even knew such a thing could exist. That, in my mind, is what innovation is all about. And we turned this idea into a successful reality. In fact, Toyota recently announced its commitment to sell 5.5 million electrified vehicles, including a mix of hybrid, plug-in hybrid, battery electrics, and fuel cell by 2025. Harnessing the wisdom and insight of the many is another essential ingredient for innovation. Some in the industry refer to me as the father of the Prius, which I like. But the success of the Prius and the hybrid technology wouldn't have happened if not for the hard work and willingness of countless others. In 2014, we followed Purius with Mirai, which is Japanese for future. The Mirai is our most innovative vehicle yet. It is a progress electric vehicle. That means it uses a fuel cell to generate its own electricity on board from hydrogen with water as the only tailpipe emission. Much like hybrids, 
we have poured the many years and considerable resources into the development of this technology. Well before we could make a market-driven case for such investment. Recently, we revealed the second generation Mirai, reconfirming our commitment to this technology. Gasoline has been the primary fuel for the first hundred years of the automobile. I believe hydrogen will be the same for the next 100 years. Like most far-reaching innovations, however, it won't happen overnight. But it will happen, it must happen, the impending impact of climate change demands it. In fact, climate change is driving many of the innovation activities at Toyota these days. In 2015, we announced our Toyota Environmental Challenge 2050. It includes six separate challenges with the overall objective to do our part to create a society where people, cars, and nature can coexist in harmony. People like the Mirai, coupled with our efforts to collaborate with the public and private sectors to build out a hydrogen refueling network is one piece of this very large puzzle. So is Project Portal, a fuel cell technology applied to the commercial trucking industry that hit the road in 2017. It served as a proof of concept, setting the stage for an expansion of the program earlier this year in partnership with heavy-duty truck maker Kenworth, the Port of Los Angeles, and the California Air Resources Board. Time will tell, but it's possible that zero-emission fuel cell patterns will become commonplace in the commercial area before they take hold in passenger vehicles. There is more, much more at times, I will admit, the scope and space of change can be over overwhelming. But more often, these forces energize me to push myself and in turn those whom I read to expand our thinking. In my office, I have two words up on my wall, will and challenge. The combination of these words are important to me. Challenging with will is what I tell my teams and I inspires me to continue pushing our limits. In many ways, 2019 reminds me of 1994 when Toyota's leaders challenged me to envision a car for the 21st century. The same is true today for those who have been challenged to chart this new way forward helping Toyota to become a mobility company. Our goal of helping everyone get where they want and need to be, whether we are building great cars and trucks, developing autonomous vehicles, or pioneering robotic technology isn't going to be as simple. It will be difficult and extremely frustrating at times. But I bet that just how the engineers and scientists at NASA felt when President Kennedy challenge them to put a man on the moon 
and bring him home again. And we all know how that turned out. Speaking of space, I want to mention that earlier this year, Toyota reached an agreement with the Japanese Aerospace Exploration Agency to develop and build a rover that the future astronauts could use to explore the moon. It will be powered by a combination of solar panels and a version of a hydrogen fuel cell system at the heart of the Mirai, among many other innovations. We plan to have a full-scale prototype by 2022 with the goal of delivering the real thing by 2029. Clearly, the commitment to innovation that gave birth to the Prius is still alive and well at Toyota. So keep your eyes on the horizon, if not the heavens. And should you begin to have doubts or want to quit, remember the words and bold leadership of President Kennedy, without whom that moonshot never would have happened. He said, change is the law of life. Those who look only to the past or present are certain to miss the future. I look forward to seeing all of you out there with me in that brave new world that rides just around the next bend. Thank you so much. <laughs>